Hey, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be talking about how to get a job as a software engineer with no experience. But really, though, there's only three steps. Fill up your resume with side projects. Do leak code and study data structures and algorithms and apply to jobs. But I'll be going into depth into each of these subjects throughout the video. Let's head to work. Now that we're here, I'm gonna go over a couple things we listed. First one is to add projects to fill up your resume. If you have no idea what type of software development to go into, a good bet would be to go into web development. There's a pretty famous flowchart that goes into the front end and back end development for web development and what things you would need to learn and what order to learn them in. So I'll post that, that's pretty helpful. But besides that, the first step is to just create a project, any project really, to list on your resume. If you don't know what to create, I recommend you take a class. Uh, you could either do this on YouTube or you can go through paid sites like Udemy. I personally recommend Udemy because there are some instructors on there that are extremely high quality and worth every penny. Also, Udemy runs sales very often and you should never pay more than $15 for a course. There's an instructor I listen to a lot called Steven Greider and this is a good beginner's course to start off with. He explains every concept in great detail and it's great for beginners and for experienced engineers alike. And it'll come out with a really nice side project to put on your resume. So once you have a project, the next step is to study data structures and algorithms. So the slightly flawed nature of software engineering interviews is that they all all ask these data structures and algorithm type questions in order to assess your level and if you're right for the job. If you don't know what these questions are, they're basically like programming puzzles based around solving some sort of word problem. And they can get pretty difficult at times. The most simple and basic one that used to be asked a lot, but is never asked anymore because of simpli its simplicity is called FizzBuzz. And I'll post it on the screen right now. Basically going through data structures and algorithms and learning them in detail is absolutely necessary for these programming interviews. So to optimize your study, just try to do it in the right way from the beginning. What I highly recommend is to pick up the book Elements of Programming Interviews in Python, and I'll put it up on the screen right now. This is probably the only book you need to learn data structures and algorithms because not only does it come with excellent solutions and questions within the book, it also comes with a self-assessment grader that you can download offline, and it even gives you a scheduled timeline for how much time you have between your interviews. So given the amount of time you have to prepare, follow their steps on which problems and which chapters to complete. This will be the backbone of your knowledge basically for all these programming tests. And any company could quiz you on any of these kinds of problems. So it's best to know them from the start. After you've covered that, you should go to a site called Leap Code, which is a very famous site that has all the programming puzzles that are asked by all the top companies. At that point, you really just want to sort the questions by most frequently asked and start doing them in order one by one until you can finish a large chunk of them. And then at that point when you're interviewing, it's just about getting the right questions and hopefully your knowledge will pay off. And the last step is really just to apply to jobs. So there's a lot of ways to do this, but these are the trends that I found from applying to jobs previously. The simplest form of applying a job is just to look up jobs that you want to go after and positions you want and apply to them online. Do not ever write a cover letter if you're just applying online because no one will read it and you're wasting your time. Most of these applications are just screened by an algorithm or a computer, so cover letters aren't even considered. Just apply to as many of these as possible. Shoot for like 20 a day. Honestly, the response rate from these applications are pretty low, but I did get my first job out of college from this method, so it can work for you. The response rate for applying online is about one to 5%, so pretty low, but it's the easiest and you can do a lot of them in one day. So I recommend this as your starting point. Just a tip here is to try not to get discouraged. When I was applying for my first job out of college, I think I sent out about 700 applications before I finally got my first job. The next thing you want to do is to go on LinkedIn and get a trial for LinkedIn Premium. Then you want to look for hiring managers at top companies that you want to work for and directly send them a LinkedIn email. Make sure to introduce yourself, introduce your skills, and have a link to the exact job you want to apply to at the company. This is so that on the chance that they read and respond to your message, you'll be saving them as much time as possible and you're making it as easy as possible for them to say yes. 
and to move you along in the process. These kinds of emails do much better. I would say I got maybe a 10 to 20% success rate. My next tip is to find recruiter emails and send cold emails to them. So when I got this tip, I felt very uncomfortable about finding recruiter emails and sending them a cold email. I found a simple trick that you can use a query in Google that I'll list right here to search for LinkedIn profiles with their email in their description, asking you to email them. This can help out a lot if you're trying to get a job by sending out a cold email. From my experience, I've gotten a really good response rate from sending cold emails, I would say it was probably around 10 to 30%. This is one of the best ways to actually get your foot in the door without being rejected by a computer. Also as a side note here, don't be too afraid about cold emailing or sending a cold message. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to some videos that I watched about it, but in the industry, it's pretty normal. There's no hard feelings if they don't respond or if they don't have time. And my last tip for getting a job is just to get a referral from a friend. So this one's kind of hard if you don't have friends in the industry or that work in a software company you want to work for. But if you do, on the off chance, happen to have a friend and you're not asking them a referral because you feel bad and you feel like you might embarrass them or something during the interview, don't think that. Referrals are the best possible chance for you to get your foot in the door for a software company and to get a software engineering interview. There's really only upsides here because if you actually do get hired, a lot of the times the person who referred you will get a bonus. And on the off chance that you don't do well in your interview, it won't reflect badly on them at all. The response rate for getting a direct referral to a company is about 100%. You will always get at least a rejection email or an email that will move you on to the next round. And yeah, those are all my tips from my experience. Let me know if there's anything you want me to go into more detail about.